Oh, good morning. Good morning, Bear. Nice to meet you. It is nice to meet you too. I've heard a lot about you and I don't know if you remember this, but we actually shared a stage earlier this year in Atlanta. I do remember that. It's when I wiped the floor with one Will Thompson, yeah. although Mr. Matthew said I was cheating and I had to later admit that he was the real winner, but we'll set that aside for now. But yes, it's great to see you again, my friend. I'm here with Matthew Roach from the Power BI CAT team. Uh, me, Paginet Report Bear, also here. Um, from I, the Power BI Bear team. <laughs> I don't know if that's an official team yet, uh, it, but I, I'll have to look into be. that. It really should be. I, I agree. So uh, I've asked Matthew to answer a few questions today for my audience of uh, dozens of viewers. And so uh, he's graciously agreed to spend a little bit of his time with me this morning. So I have a few questions here and uh, he's not seen them ahead of time. Uh, so we'll start kind of rapid fire. Uh, so where are you from? Syracuse. Oh, so uh, I used to live in Rochester. Mm. Which is not that far from Syracuse. Did you attend Syracuse University? Uh, I did not, but my wife did. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, very cold. It could be. I it miss, can be. I miss the winters. You you do miss the winters. I do. I would hibernate for six... No, that was you. That was you hibernating. <laughs> uh, That's no, not I true. The tie shows that I get out and about. Is that the business bear tie? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like a biz bear, like the biz bar in uh, Excel. Oh, I like that. I like oh, that a thank lot. thank you. I, I was able to pivot quickly. But uh, no, that was, you caught me off guard there. But yes, I remember the cold, the very cold winters in Rochester. So it was here. So you've come all the way down to the West Coast. I have. You have, yes. So uh, how long have you been here at Microsoft? I've been with Microsoft for just over 11 years. Oh, uh, wow. I started in October 2008. Oh, cool. Oh, and uh, so interesting question here for you then. Um, so if you could go back in time, say you had a hot tub time machine, and you could tell your younger self one th piece of advice that you wish you'd known when you started here at Microsoft, what would that be? Do what you want. So uh, one of the things that I see, one of the things that I see a lot of teams, and not necessarily this team, but a lot of the teams that I've worked at at Microsoft, uh, there is, uh, a culture where the assumption is that the new people on the team don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that I wish that I had known on some previous teams is that even as a more junior member of the team or a newer member of the team, being able to ensure that, uh, that my voice is heard and that I'm effectively representing my understanding of customers' challenges, that would have made me uh, it would have increased my impact. I would have had uh, more value from the years that I've spent here. That is a great piece of advice. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I could have said it was crummy, but that feels bad. And it, it wasn't. It was very good. You should do what you want, though. No, I S Say your truth. I'm, Speak I'm, I'm here truth. with you with a stuffed bear, so that's kind of... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I, I do have to say that uh, uh, I would not have expected 10 years ago that I would be sitting in a conference room being interviewed by a stuffed bear. That's true. Yes. Th funny how the twists and turns have happened. Would you've also, ex never mind, I won't go there. I was going to go political, but let's not do that. No. So, um, hey, so I, I follow you on social media and I notice you're very interested in swords yes. and sword competitions. So how did you get started with that? So I was... I was a nerd growing up, so I would read fantasy books, I would play Dungeons and Dragons. Love uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Love Dungeons and Dragons, and uh, I was never athletic in any way. Uh, mm. So, you know, I was the last one picked for all of the sports that had oh. ball in the name. Yes, that was exactly mm. what it felt like. And when I was in college, uh, I was a competitive fencer. So I got Ooh, into I it because, like ooh, it's like sword fighting, yep. right? And, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. It was poking people with little pieces of metal that you mm -hmm. pretend are swords. Yes. Uh, and it was still fun. And I don't want to say that anyone who does uh, sport fencing is doing anything wrong, but it wasn't sword fighting. I see. Uh, and I tried other combat sports over the years. Uh, but it was around five years ago when there was a video trending on social media where I saw that there are people around the world uh, who have found these historical sword fighting manuscripts. They've translated them into modern languages like English and are applying them both as a martial art and as a combat sport. And on the day that I saw this video, it was like the, the light had 
you know, the sky had opened up mm -hmm. and the light was shining mm -hmm. down. It's like, oh my God, people do this. People fight with real steel, you know, blunt so you don't kill your friends. You mm, want to fight the same good. person more than once. Yes. Uh, but they fight with real steel swords. Uh, and I watched the video, I got online, I found a club in Seattle, and literally the next night I was at practice. It is the most fun that you can do and still be legal. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, fine. No, that's really cool. Well, that's great to hear. That's an interesting... Uh, like, I'd, I've been interested to see how you got started in that, so I learned something new today. That's great. So, uh, hey, how many S-words jokes can I make in this particular interview before you get annoyed? Uh, I'd start counting now. <laughs> how many do you have? I'm out. So <laughs> the, the secret is, I was annoyed when I started, so it was a trick question. Oh, that's fair. That's how you cheat a lie detector test, yeah. too. You like put your foot on the tack so you're always in pain. Right? Yes. Yes, okay. It's kind of like that scene from the movie with the Hulk, and it's like, my secret is I am yes, always, always angry. angry. That's true. Yeah. That's a very good point. All right, so uh, pivoting back to, uh, this is a bit of a okay. layup So here. this is the pivot table, not the conference table, then. ba -doom -tsh. Yes, no, very good. I, I'm going to have to keep up with Matthew here. I'm very used to my guests good. being. <laughs> 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 so, true or false, T SQL is superior to DAX. Mm, it depends. Come on, man. I laid it up there for you. Well, it, how do you define superior? Is it is an easier language to use? Absolutely. Is it the language that if I had the option to have only one programming language, if I was stranded on a desert island for the rest of my life, would I choose T-SQL? I certainly would. But it really depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. I'm cutting that part out. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> does, a, does a bear edit in the woods? <laughs> Using Windows Movie Maker, no less. Ooh. So, <laughs> so, okay. So, hey, I know you're a big data flows guy. And I saw there were 50 new features announced today on the blog. 50 new features? Yes. In one month? Yeah, <gasps> it, was, it was unbelievable. So, uh, are you aware of these new features? Uh, I am. Okay. Are there any highlights we should be we should really focus on out of the fifty? Uh, yeah. So uh, first, first and foremost, go to my blog. It's ssbipolar.com, not polar bear. Although there's an obvious tie in there. Clearly. Uh, and I actually uh, sent out a blog post highlighting the things that I think are most important. Oh, cool. Because I wrote it, I didn't have to read it. So if if this video has a different <laughs> list than what's in the blog post. Uh, I will own that. Oh, fair enough. But but basically, the things that I think that are most interesting are uh, the ability to have the uh, the data profiling and the parameterization in Power Query Online. Dataflows is a self-service data preparation tool that allows business users to perform data warehousing or data mart-like tasks using Power Query. And one of the uh, one of the uh, let me see if I can phrase this well. One of the interesting aspects of working with Dataflows is that its query development experience is in Power Query Online, which is a relatively new way to build Power Query queries. Mm -hmm. So a lot of users will actually build their queries using Power BI Desktop and then just copy and paste the script up into Power Query Online. Because yep. Power BI Desktop has been this amazing tool we've been investing in for a decade now. There is you know, a ton of features and Power Query Online is still catching up a bit. This month's announcement shows uh, that that gap has been closed significantly, both with these uh, these UI enhancements, which make it much more productive and efficient to use, as well as uh, some of the uh, connectors that are now available. So I, I'm sorry, I have to clarify. We've been investing in Power BI Desktop for a decade? So we've been investing in Power Query for a lot longer than Power Query has been called Power Query. Ah. So both that connectivity stack, mm -hmm. as well as the editor. I don't know if you remember, uh, this may have been before your day, but we had Power BI Designer and Data Explorer, if you remember. I uh, do. Those, those early <laughs> preview names. Sadly, they're not before my time. <laughs> You're, you've aged very well, Mr. Thank you. Bear. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm actually been around quite some time. So, uh, so you mentioned the word flow, and I, I have to address the elephant in the room. Is that it feels like the word flow is in a lot of product names here at Microsoft. It's in fewer product names than it used to be. That's yes. got to be progress. Yes, it, it is one less uh, with the recent announcement of Power. But uh, how can we tell which is which? 
That's an interesting question. Uh, Bingo! Look, so you, you <laughs> look at the context, right? So if we, if we think about either flow or, to be more specific, data flow as a term, this is a term that is not specific to Microsoft. It's not specific to Power BI or any other tool. That's true. Uh, back when I was your age, uh, I did a lot of work using SQL Server Integration Services, which is uh, uh, an older but still viable uh, ETL tool uh, similar to data flows, or, or to put it in a different way, SQL integration services can be used to solve similar problems to those that, that Power BI data flows can solve. I call it the get out of jail free card. You call what the get out of jail? SQL Server right? Integration Services. Because it gets the data out of the jail that it's in? Kind of. It's more of my, if I need to go and figure out how to get the data somehow, I can usually use SSIS, mm -hmm. and that'll be my get out of jail free in terms of figuring out a way to get it. Excellent. But do you remember that Integration Services, SSIS, had both control flow and data flow as its two primary uh, uh, characteristics? I did. And you know that Azure Data Factory has data flows in it, uh, as well as Power BI having data flows. Uh, the concept of having data flow from one place to another is really this tool agnostic concept. Mm -hmm. And the key thing with Power BI data flows is that they are designed for those users that would be comfortable working in Power Query, in Power BI Desktop, or in Excel. Uh, and as a general rule, if you were to give uh, SQL Server integration services to a finance analyst or to a marketing manager or to a business user that needs to get value from data and needs to transform it and have it available, if you give them integration services or data factory, they're probably not going to be successful because even though the underlying functionality, the capabilities are similar, they overlap a lot, uh, the experience for developing it isn't friendly for those users. Integration services uh, had a very steep learning curve. In order to do even simple things, you had to understand the tool and uh, spend a lot of time learning it. Data flows allow a user to build on what they already know about Power BI and Power Query without needing to learn a whole bunch of technical stuff. I figured it out. Yeah, but you're a bear. Bears know everything. Really? I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, that's that, a good. That's that a works good, on many levels. That does. It does very, very much so. So uh, one of the things I've noticed, you're very active uh, online and both on Twitter. You now are doing a video series. Uh, you have a blog. You uh, you shamelessly plugged before. Not shamelessly. I was, was going to mention it at the end, but um, shamefully. <laughs> shamefully before. fine. So uh, <laughs> what advice do you have for folks looking to engage with the larger community in a similar way? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so, <laughs> very closed-minded there. No, uh, so so it, it depends on what their goals are. Uh, my my goal with my social media uh, interaction is to tell the stories that are that form in my brain. So uh, a blog post, a tweet, a video on YouTube. Generally, these are these are the pearls that form around the grain of sand that my work uh, puts in my brain, if I can mangle an analogy there. <laughs> well uh, done. So all, <laughs> all day long, almost every day, I will be working with some of the biggest Power BI customers around the world, and I will mm -hmm. see these, these interesting things come up, and after you know, a dozen conversations, there are these patterns and these trends that start to emerge where I see uh, large organizations and their data or BI teams either doing similar things or having similar challenges or making similar mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I see those, I want there to be a way for me to be able to share what I've seen or what I've learned with a larger audience. For anyone who's watching, so you too could end up talking with a stuffed animal mm -hmm. in front of dozen of people. <laughs> a couple dozen, a couple dozen. No, no, that's very, that's very important. To, yes, I think that that's a good advice. Is that um, an interesting feedback? That it's one of the reasons why I started doing some of these interviews is because I wanted to learn more about some of these things because I'd seen people have similar questions to those I'm asking. Wonderful. So, so that's good. So you, I mentioned earlier you work on the Power BI Cat team. Uh, what's your favorite part of working on that team? The cats. There are actual cats? I don't like cats. How can you? Ah, oh, we won't go down that. Uh, That's probably that, uh, Cats and bears, there's a... There's, there's a history, yes. Centuries of animosity. Yes, yeah, so if you've ever seen Jungle Book, it's a... 
<laughs> I have not <gasps> seen Jungle Book. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, anyway, so uh, what's your favorite part of working on that team? Uh, it's the people that I work with. Uh, so I've I've been doing data work, you know, as a consultant, as a trainer, as a program manager at Microsoft. Uh, my career has centered around Microsoft's data platform since the mid to late 90s. Mm -hmm. and, and in these different roles, I've had the ability to do a bunch of interesting things and learn a lot and grow a lot. Uh, and the thing that I see on this team is that I'm surrounded by people that make me feel like the dumbest person in the room. I hear you there. <laughs> I know that you're just saying that to be kind to me. No, I'm dumb. No, absolutely. Uh, but but there is there is amazing people with this broad diversity of experience and talent, and I know that there are things that I can do that my team member team members might struggle to, but I also know that anything any place where I need help or knowledge or experience, I am in the best possible company uh, to reach out, to have a conversation, to ask a question, uh, to find some of the, the premier experts in the world. So it pushes me to be better and it gives me the, the people around me that I can learn from and grow from every day. Oh, that's a great, that's a very thoughtful answer. Thank you, thank you for that. So uh, for my last question, uh, this is, I don't normally practice gotcha journalism, but for you, I brought in a special guest interviewer to ask this final question, so I'll be right back. Why do you hate me? I don't hate you. You're just a non-canonical Dataflows animal. So why is he canonical? By the way, I'm Dataflows dog. I am the whiny foil for Paginated Report Bear. Why is he canonical? He's canonical. Canonical to what? So Derek the Data Flows Rat is the only stuffed animal that is associated officially with the Data Flows brand. All I, versions of Data Flows? Uh, Power BI Data Flows. So you, Azure Data Flows is, is okay. Azure Data Flows isn't a thing. But you just talked about it. No, I talked about Azure Data Factory. That has data flows. Uh, it has but it has mapping data flows and it has whatever the other one is. It has mashing. What is the other one? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see? And there we go. You just don't know. And I don't I don't mean to be rude, but maybe this is the time to tap out. I have to leave? No, you don't have to leave, but you, maybe you should acknowledge that Derek the Data Flows rat is the official stuffed mascot of Power BI Data Flows. But what about me? What about you? I like doing the videos. Well, you should continue to do videos. I'm sure that the paginated report bearer would love your companionship. And I know that Mr. Matthew is a fan of yours as well as the bearer. You're welcome to be here, but maybe this is a fight you're not going to win. Could maybe Derek just be like, it's nice to have an additional person? Uh, Derek might like friends. Maybe we can introduce you after the video. That's a good idea. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching this, this video. Uh, it's me, Data First Dog. And me, Pageant and Report Bear. It's easier to do this voice than the other one. Um, so thanks very much, Matthew. This was very good. It was very insightful. Great to have you. It's nice that you got to meet uh, the kind of official Data Flows dog, but uh, we'll set that aside. Um, Hopefully, we'll have another video lined up soon with another member of the team, but thanks very much for watching. Yeah, yeah. to any other members of the Power BI team watching, have your agent talk so that they don't bring any unexpected <laughs> guests in. This gotcha thing, <laughs> last time, last time ever. We're done here, we're done. <laughs> oh, 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 bye. <laughs> <laughs>